We're in the control tower of Brussels Airport. Flight SAS 589 has just appeared on the screens. In fact, it descended from its cruising altitude much earlier over Amsterdam. Scandinavian 589er confirming descent of 340. The optimum thing for us is to, um, is to have an, an idle descent all the way to the runway. Uh, I mean, th but that is ruined already now. As we descend now, we, uh, we can throttle back and thus uh, decreasing the fuel consumption. But as we get down to flight level 330, or as this case 310, we have to throttle up again and increase the fuel consumption. And that's not optimal for us. This SAS flight is obliged to descend in stages while making detours, called step descend, to position itself in the arrival traffic. This kind of descent is longer and more costly in fuel. In the future, thanks to better traffic management, most flights will be able to make continuous descents. The engines will be constantly at low power, thus reducing fuel consumption and its impact 30, on the environment. 20, These procedures are being explored with all the partners of CESAR, including the airlines. CESAR is very important for the airline industry. Uh, the inefficiencies of flying today within Europe are estimated at something around 4 billion euro per year. Uh, total costs are 8 billion, so you can see it's a lot of money. Uh, but also it's important for the passengers because we, we can significantly reduce the delays, especially we need more capacity in the future. In 2007, 77% of short-haul flights were on time. In future, thanks to the modernization of European airspace management, we can expect a punctuality rate at arrival of almost 95%. We are currently developing the technologies and the operational procedures until 2015. This will be followed by the so-called deployment phase, which will deploy the new technologies between 2015 and 2020, 2025. Through the collaboration of all players in the sector, CESAR, the technological component of the single European sky, will support airspace reorganization in line with traffic flows, create more capacity, and increase the efficiency of the air traffic management system. Since the 1960s, there have been tremendous improvements in aircraft fuel consumption and noise levels. The latest aircraft use 70% less fuel and have reduced perceived noise by 75%. European goals for 2020 are to reduce fuel consumption and noise levels by a further 50%. That's quite a jump. Hi, and welcome on board to uh, this Airbus 321 simulator. It's uh, a cockpit layout that's similar to the one you are on board uh, in the aircraft you are on board now. This is actually normally in my workplace as well, but it's a bigger bird I'm flying. <clears throat> I'm going to explain uh, or try to explain uh, some of the systems and the procedures that will be utilized during, uh, during this uh, exciting flight, the MINT event. I'm going to start with the FMS. It's the heart for our navigation purposes on board the aircraft in the cockpit. FMS stands for Flight Management System. 
The FMS is uh, computing the navigation part of our flights today and it's making it as efficient as possible with the performance and the databases on board the aircraft. The visible part of the FMS is the displays in front of the left and the right pilot as you can see here. We can give uh, different um, inputs to this one during the flight and we do it to prepare the flights as well. It's connected to the autopilot so uh, it guides the autopilot in a normal flight phase also optimum for us pilots. Uh, the uh, visible part you can see uh, on the screen in front is actually the path uh, that is uh, included in the FMS and that we have programmed for this flight. It's uh, four dimension actually today in a modern FMS and the fourth dimension is the time and the time accuracy is going to be very important that you will see for the future. But the trajectory is the vital part coming from the FMS computers. Over the past years, many improvements have been made in the field of navigation. Exploiting the capabilities of satellite-based positioning systems, IKEO has defined the required navigation performance concept, RNP. If an aircraft is RNP 0.3, its position will be less than 0.3 nautical mile offset from the defined route 95% of the time. The industry standard DO236, implicated in the design of the actual systems, extended the IKEO definition and added a containment factor, significantly increasing confidence on the actual position of the aircraft. RNPAR, standing for authorization required, allows aircraft to go down to RNP 0.1 to reduce margins to obstacles and to fly curved segments to the runway. RNP operations provide a significant improvement, providing flexible flight paths that take into consideration the aircraft's performance. With RNP, Airbus aircraft are capable of flying the most efficient routes. The aircraft can now better integrate complex traffic patterns smoothly operating between sensitive noise areas, restricted airspace and uneven or high terrain. Also, development of RNP procedures can be used to organise traffic flow, helping ATC deconflict areas and therefore increase airspace capacity or simply reducing noise nuisance near the airport. In the example of New York, RNP procedures made it possible to deconflict JFK and LaGuardia approaches even in IMC conditions, thus ensuring lower minima, higher availability of the runways and increased safety. In those areas where ATC is implementing specific RNP procedures, it is often the best equipped which is first served. <laughs> 